Thank you, John. Dear sisters and brothers, when I enter this beautiful hall, I see that it's like a powerhouse. It's not so often that somebody addresses hundreds of leaders, leaders who are thinking, leaders who are acting, and leaders who are resulting in making this world better. So I congratulate you for that. You are the leaders. Today, we live in a world which is fastly connected with internet, high-speed internet. We have conquered Moon and Mars many years ago. We have made so much industrialized and digital progress. But in spite of all these, we live in a world where millions of our children are not safe. Only last week, I was reading a news and felt myself ashamed. In Syria, teenage girls are sold by the militant groups like ISIS for sexual slavery for less than a cigarette tax price. Some months ago, I saw a picture of a boy who was given a gun to kill some of the opponents of ISIS. And if that child failed to do so because he was a five-year, six-year-old tiny boy, he was buried alive. Six-year-old, seven-year-old girls are made hostage in thousands and sold for sex slavery. And if they fail to do, they are buried alive. We have not been able to guarantee a safer world for our children. And if the children are not safe, the world is not safe. If the children are not free, our world is not free. If the children are not guaranteed education, we can't call ourselves civilized and cultured. Every single child matters. Every single minute matters. We live in a world where 168 million children are producing wealth at the cost of their childhood, freedom, and education. Their aspirations and dreams are crushed they may produce shoes, which you and I are wearing. They are working in factories and mines. They are producing clothes, which you or I may be wearing. I was in Ivory Coast about a year ago. And I met a group of children who had scars and injuries and wounds in their hands and feet and asked to a child, you work in cocoa beans production as a farm laborer at the age of 14 or 13 maybe. How do you like chocolate? And the boy looked at me surprisingly, what chocolate is? I said, you are producing that ingredient, which is the base of chocolate, cocoa, bean. Have you never heard of chocolate? He said, no. I have never tasted and never heard of chocolate. I felt ashamed. A few years ago, I rescued a child in the whole group. He was working 
in garment production in New Delhi. He was trafficked, sold, and held in slavery, bonded labor. And when he was working some embroidery work on clothes, the bridal clothes to be sold, to be exported, perhaps in America, or perhaps in Europe, people must be using it. And I was asking, what do you think when you make it like that in slavery? And he said that, I don't think anything, but if you are asking and if you can feel a dream in my eyes, my dream would be that this beautiful cloth which I'm knitting now would be used by my elder sister when she marries. Children are not safe. 58 million children in the world have never seen schools. And many of these children are manipulated, brainwashed, and misused by the fanatic and fundamentalist forces. We don't live in a world which could call itself safer and isolated. Some countries, some people thought that they live in an island of security, safety. They are safe. They are living in an island of prosperity. Dear friends, those days are gone. If not gone, going very fast. We have to think of one world. We cannot think of India. We cannot think of, think of Africa or America or Europe. We have to open our minds because we live in one world which is facing same problems. May it be global warming and climate change. May it be the global terrorism. May it be the global poverty and injustices and especially may it be the slavery of our children. We all have to act as one world. If we keep on thinking narrowly, we are not going to make the world safer for ourselves and generations to come. I was reading that uh, some of the themes of uh, this event include democracy, development, and defense. We have to ensure democracy for children, but how we can bring democracy if so many children are not educated? Education is the cornerstone for development. Quality, inclusive education, not simply education. Every child must be given quality education. And I strongly believe and say that when a girl picks up a pencil, and start writing on paper, it weakens the power of a million guns. <laughs> when the wall of a school is constructed, a million walls of hatred and divide fall down. We have to invest on it. Only 4% of total ODA is being spent on education for children in developing countries. Less than 1% of humanitarian aid goes to education of children. This is unfair. You are the leaders. You are the leaders of today. You are the leaders of tomorrow. And that's why I, I call upon Another three Ds. Democracy, development, and defense is one set of three Ds. And I am going to call for another three Ds. This is dream. Dream for a better world. Dream for yourself to become big, but dream big for better world. Second is discover. Each one of you is a leader, as I said, and I read, I know. Discover much more potential which remain unharnessed and untapped. Discover the opportunities surrounding us. Discover the challenges which we have to be, which have to be met. And then use that discovery. And the third thing is 
too. If you dream good and big, if you discover inner potential and strength, but if you don't do and keep on waiting that someone else will do, a bigger leader will do, a senator will do, the president will do, the United Nations will do, the prime minister will do, no. We have to do our bit. So dream, discover, and do. Friends, I won't take much of your time, but as a child, when I saw, at the age of five, a child my age sitting on the doorstep of my school, I refused to accept this injustice and inequality. I refused to accept the denial of human dignity and rights. When I was brought up as an engineer, I studied and taught in the university. I realized that many, many children around me in my country and in my world are not safe. They are exploited and abused, sold and bought like animals, trafficked from one to another place and one to another country. I refuse to accept that injustice. When I realized that the children are making products, and we people are using them without knowing. I launched the first ever consumers campaign about carpets made in South Asia. Because I refuse to accept that the consumers have no power. I refuse to accept that we don't have that inner conscience, heart and soul. If we go to the consumers that look, you will become the party to it if you keep on buying the products made by child slaves. I challenged it, and that has resulted in the decline of child labor in South Asian carpet industry from about a million, according to Department of Labor statistics, to hardly 200,000 now. It was possible. When I saw that 260 million children in the world, and the number was growing 20 years ago, entering into the, into the trap of child labor and slavery, I decided to organize a worldwide march against child labor, 80,000 kilometers march across 103 countries. Over 7 million people physically participated in it altogether. We wanted to build a worldwide movement, and today I am so happy and so pleased and delighted to see that house is not divided. You as politicians, you as bureaucrats, you as faith leaders, students, leaders, young leaders, business leaders are sitting in this one room. United we win. And we build a worldwide movement involving all these sectors with a demand that there should be an international law to combat the worst forms of child labor without any excuse and without any delay. And when thousands of children marching with me, and we reached in Geneva and addressed the ILO's General Assembly, what we call the ILC, International Labor Congress, in 1998, the government's leaders, of trade unions, leaders of businesses were in tears. Because the children took over the dais, took over the podium. And when a child said that if you are so poor that you cannot take away the guns and tools from our tiny hands, we keep on coming in her, here again and again. If you cannot give us the books and toys, we will keep on coming here and again and knocking your doors, the world leaders. We need an international law. And that has resulted in the new ILO Convention on the Worst Forms of Child Labor. When we realize that the number of out-of-school children has been growing, in spite of all the promises made by the leaders, again and again we failed our children. The promise was made in 1990, what we call the Jomtian's Declaration on Education for All. It was promised that all children will receive and complete education by year 2000. But by 2000, the number grew 
out of school children's number. We raised the voice because we refused to accept it to continue. And we launched a worldwide campaign, what we call the Global Campaign for Education. And that has yielded the results. Friends, the number of child laborers in the world has been decreased during the last 20 years from 260 million to 168 million now. The number of out-of-school children has also been decreased worldwide from 130 million to 58 million now. We can make it possible. We can change. We can make the world better for our children and for ourselves. But big challenges are ahead. We have recently launched a new foundation here, Kela Satyarthi Children's Foundation. Because I strongly believe that the Nobel Peace Prize is just comma in my life. It's not full stop. I cannot sit and rest. The big challenges are ahead. Every single child has to be in school. Every single child should be protected from slavery and trafficking and abuse, sexual abuse, which is growing. Every child. And friends, it is possible. We will make it possible. We have seen the results if we act better. If we act with the sense of urgency, we can do it. And I am sure we will do it. I believe, I believe in my friendship with Americans for the last 30 years. I came here in this country with many crazy ideas, including this carpet consumers campaign, including the global march against child labor. And someone like Senator Tom Harkin, 25 years ago, agreed that this is a serious problem. And we worked together for 25 years. A number of other senators and congressmen, bipartisans, supported the idea and action against child slavery in the world. The civil society organizations, the faith leaders, the business leaders support it. And now we together stand here to make child slavery, child labor, child prostitution, child marriages, child sexual abuse, child violence a history. And we do it. Young people, I can see the young faces here. So many young leaders are sitting here. And no demographic segment of our life or society can match with the enthusiasm and idealism of young people like you who are sitting here. I can see your bright eyes. I can feel a champion, a leader, and Abraham Lincoln, a Martin Luther King, a Mahatma Gandhi is inside you. We are global citizens, and we will make this world a better world for everyone by education, by protection, by enhancing, deepening democracy, by making defense a reality in the lives of every single child in the earth. But let us begin now. Do you agree that we are going to make this world free of child slavery? If you agree, don't clap. You have to say yes. yes. In our lifetime, we are going to make this world free of child slavery. Yes. In our lifetime, we are going to see that every single child is in school. Yes. You join me? Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.